Uber Regnason. You're a long way from your king's side. Eivor. Yes, a long stroll through the hills and fields of Mercia. All so I could thank you. Thank me? For sending my brother to his just reward. In spite of the harm he caused you and everyone around you. I could not keep him in line in this life. But I have no doubt the old father will put him to good use in the next. A Dagnus followed your brother, one I am not sure he understood. But as you say, he is now where he belongs. He is. And as a show of my thanks, I came to offer you a gift. A token of my respect. Thank you. Put it to good use, Wolfkist. And may we meet again soon. On a battlefield, if the fates are kind. I'm grateful to see Basim returned. There's so much more I wish to learn from him. Ah, here is something for you. An odd letter arrived a few days ago. Signed by one calling himself... A poor fellow soldier of Christ. That's right. Someone you know. Not by sight. But this soldier has intimate knowledge of the Order. He's the reason I have found them so easily in the cities. The letter says you must travel to Winchester, visit God's house and look for a man in white. Then recite this passage. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly cometh wisdom. All right. I'll speak with Ranvi. Get a fuller picture of all this. Do you need something? Keep this. It serves your cause better than it does my pocket. One more gone. The world is brighter for it. As a token of my deep gratitude, I want you to have this. Thank you. I expect there are yet more to claim. I have to go. Then go in peace. My love. I want to see the Alliance map. Python received a message from Winchester, from someone calling himself a poor fellow soldier of Christ. Your hidden ally. Very interesting. More targets, I assume. Yes. So what do you think? Could it be a trap? As a West Saxon stronghold, Winchester will be a rather unwelcome place for you. But that is nothing you cannot handle. If you go, do not go boldly. I'll make my way to Winchester. The letter asked me to meet a man in white at a house of God, and then recite this phrase. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly cometh wisdom. A passage from their holy book, I believe. Interesting. Go with care. Willy, making yourself at home? As best as I know how. It is good to be here with you and your people. I feel my life has found a new road. Good, and just so you know, we have all kinds of sticks nearby. Oak, beech, pine, in case your bum starts itching from sitting too long. How kind of you, Eivor. I will be sure to stir your soup with one after I have had a sound scratching. Ah. Ah, a new lip. Nantum cannibus ad olibitque felini mendaccio. The Lord takes the best of us to sit beside him. Bishop Aylforth? He is not with God. He is locked in the flaming crypt where all heretics go. Oh, she don't hear you. Mighty fall. 
And God's servant, the Bishop Aylforth. A Dane treads the cobbles of God's house. In search of Christ's redemption, I hope. Your Christ can wait his turn. It's you I've come to see. Is that so? When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly cometh wisdom. You know these words, and you know why I speak them. I do. But I am not yet satisfied that you are the one for the task ahead. As Jesus said unto Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Speak the deeds of Christ in order. Only then will you cometh unto my Lord. If I must dance to your tune, tell me where to step. In books one may find such wisdom. We had many in England, before the Danes burned our churches. A few yet remain nearby. Or perhaps a more pious soul in need of charity will reward you with a lesson. I have nothing for you now, but I will return. Even the mighty fall. And God determined the Bishop Aylesworth was mighty indeed in defense of his God. He was a man of surpassing vigor. He bathed in the river, so a gentle wash brings them closer to their God. Meek as a lamb, God called Aelfus to sit beside him. He rose from the dead. A nice trick, and not easily done. <laughs> Their god brings them light, just as Baldur does. Light as bright as the summer sun. Speak the deeds of Christ in order. God breathed on the water, and in the Jordan River he was cleansed of all sin. His baptism. On the mountain his face shone like the sun, and he became light. His transfiguration. The women came with offerings, but they could not find him when they looked among the dead. His resurrection. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Well spoken. Are the riddles done? That is not for me to decide, for I am not the one who summoned you. If you follow, I will lead you to him. I solved your riddle, and all I get is silence. Who am I to meet? Shh. Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. Yet men become wise by speaking with other men. They grow foolish when keeping to silence. Hush! Your prattling offends God's ears. We're here! May Christ, whose terror scares away the foul throngs, make with me a strong covenant. Was God's lesson instructive? Do all the priests in Winchester have this same skill for drama? You risk your life, Alfred King. I have invited you here to speak on equal terms. Do the Dane laws of hospitality not apply in Wessex? You gifted my Jarl to that well from the Order of Ancients, the warrior Fulke. Fulke was an enemy of Wessex, but it seems someone has already removed her threat from my lands. If you did not hear it was me, you have now. Impressive. 
The Order of Ancients has surely been crippled by her loss. How much do you know of this Order? Only this, and little more. This letter, signed by one who calls himself a poor fellow soldier of Christ, warns of a plot against my life. The gallows, the quill, the Sikhs. Free men eager to kill you. Two now. The Bishop Aylfirth is dead. He was the Sikhs, so far as I can tell. And a humble servant of your god. That must sting. Still, his death has strengthened Christian fellowship in Winchester. I pray the deaths of his colleagues will do the same. You have faced warriors like me many times before, and many times you have lost or been cheated. Why trust me now? I have men in London and Jorvik. Men who send me reports on the rise and fall of the tides of war. Not long ago, men and women of some influence were murdered in those places. In oddly specific circumstances. When I received this letter from our poor fellow soldier, it did not take long to work out why. I don't know your motive, nor what you hope to gain. All I ask is that you finish the work you have begun, before these fallen souls infest England further. I should let the Order kill you. It would speed our conquest of England. You may remove the organs of state. The cancer will remain. Then promise me a reward I can sing about, a healthy king's weight in silver. Very well. As much as you can carry. This morning, my Reeve, Goodwin, was not at his post. A man you trust? Goodwin was following the clues given in this letter when he disappeared. Where was he last seen? At his house, by the West Gate. You may find something there. Eivor, compose yourself while you are my guest. My city is not a battlefield. Not yet, Great King, but the day will come. Hmm. That Selwyn's got some stones on him around. Good one gone, and guards sniffing around. So where would they have taken him? <gasps> Papers thrown on the fire. Goodwin covering his tracks, or the guards destroying evidence. Broken balls. Food scattered. They took him by force. There must be a garrison in the city. A violent struggle with the guards. They must have taken him to Winchester's garrison. <laughs> Reeve Selwyn. Ordered executions for petty theft and mudslinging. A husband and wife to be carried out soon. A Dane in Winchester? These are strange times. King Alfred sent me, pleading from his bended knee to find someone. I know Alfred well enough to spot a bloody lie when I hear it. If he did send you, he was standing tall and proud. That he was, and you are the man I've come to find, Goodwin. Do you know why? If I had one guess, to find these heretics from the Order of Ancients, and bury them so deep, even God would need a shovel. So where do we start digging? My research should help us. If they haven't burned it already, it'll be somewhere nearby. I will find your research. Now go, before they find their wolf has fled his cage. Let's regroup beyond the walls!
Goodwin's research against the Order of Ancients. I am grateful for your help. It's a brazen move to arrest Alfred's favored Reeve. This so-called order are nothing but deviled shit peddlers. Shit peddlers who have wormed their way into every crevasse of your country. They're dangerous. I didn't catch your name, did I? Eivor of the Raven Clan. Scourge of Mercia, if that name doesn't rattle some recognition. Well, Eivor, when our three heretics smolder on a heap of ash, we'll down a cup of ale together and share our distaste of Mercians like old friends. Alfred believes at least one is dead. Your bishop Aelfirth was the Sikhs. Bugger. Half of Winchester is in mourning for that nun groper. One calls himself the Quill. Are words his weapons? There were rumors of letters nailed up around Winchester. It may be that one of these can tell us more. The Gallows? What do you know of him? Must be another Reeve, I'm sure of it. Only we have the power to mete out justice. And this one would walk with cocksure righteousness. The Gallows had you arrested, so he must command the law. Reeve Selwyn? Of course! That hedge pig has brought down laws like a hammer on Winchester. Executing sinners on spurious charges in the square. Could it be another? He's the man. He's the only one who fits. End his terror, Eivor. Winchester, open your eyes. See how Alfred's lofty ideals are weighed down in this mire of human effluence. These prisoners before you do not live by Alfred's laws. They live above them. They wallow in shit, only guided by their own perversity. Hubert here, his wits addled by ale, spoke false of Bishop Aelferth. Our pious servant of Winchester, who even now lies cold in his grave shroud. Aelfoth was no man of God. He'll burn for his sins. <laughs> Your wife is obeying shrew, Hubert. Is there a man here who has not supped rancid mead from her cup? When will your work be done, Selwyn? When all of Winchester falls to your justice? Winchester has passed judgment, Hubert. May God have mercy on your cankerous soul. There are rats in the grain store, and Alfred has set the trap. You cannot steal it. Oh, oh. Stop there, 
tell you. Perverter of justice. Who dares execute the king's noose? It is not in Alfred's name that you carry out your work. You are the Order's executioner. <laughs> you peer through the veil, but you do not see clearly. Alfred's laws are a slave's fever dream. He offers shit-soaked beggars a seat at his table, where the meek devour the strong. Who best to judge the fate of the wretched many, if not the strong and worthy few? To protect your people, you must sheathe your hand in an iron glove. You grind your heels into the backs of freed men, not those who deserve it. The Order condemns all men to pain. For all men are but a shadow of the perfection we should know. The perfection of the Ancient Ones. You are only a man, Reed. One dead branch on a fast-dying tree. <laughs> dries up the bones. Does Magister Batter not teach you the scriptures? Magister Batter is a horse's dangles. And here is the axe I used to swat a fly. You have ventured from your burrow. And you have plunged my city into chaos. I had hoped you would use the lessons of your subtler gods. We have no subtle gods. If the gallows is truly dead, perhaps we can allow cautious revelry? It may be I should take my Dane guild now, leave you to the snakes that remain. <sighs> Forgive my outburst. God sowed in me a passion, but English prose is an instrument long out of tune. We all want better for our people, don't we, Eivor? Yours and ours. The quill remains. What do we know? The decay of learning has been gentle in Wessex. We enjoy the office of wise men, but we have neglected the study of wisdom. The quill preys on this lapse. Someone disagrees with your reforms, Alfred. And he's calling the children to arms. Now we know why so many children scurry through the streets. Feral and untutored. I can talk to some, see where they lead me. Good. Find me at the alehouse when you're done. And try not to scare the piss from any of them. We Norse are the monsters of your sex and mother's bedtime tales. I promise nothing. I see you, child. Come. The bad Reeve. Selwyn. I saw you punish him in the square. He hurt many people. Yes. He hurt my mother to death. Then took her good luck charm. Perhaps you found it? A little carved tree. It is all I have to remember her by. Such a sad story. Take this. Perhaps it'll keep you off the streets and out of trouble. For me? Oh, thank 
like you. Spry little mouse, will you lead me to your quill? Apples, eh? Fruit don't feed a grown boy. Do you have any chicken? I don't, but maybe you can tell me what you know of the quill. The quill? God blimey, you're brave. Find Elwyn and Wigbert. They see everything. <laughs> you there, little cut purse. Keep your beak out, nosy. I'm starving! God's beard! You'll set Winchester ablaze! Roly poly mutton man! You can't catch me! Oh, God help me! I'd rather be shoveling dung in Malvern again. Mind your own beeswax. Elwyn, is it? You wield fire like the flaming Jotna. It, it was burning when I found it. Hot days like this, things just go whoosh. Well? Oi! Wigbert, you great moon calf. Hand it over, Alwyn. We saw your little shadow take it. What are you looking at? I'm not sure. Looks like an old lady's been rolling in shit with all the other ugly sows. A uh, hack in a dress, maybe? Your kind. So did you. That showed them. Trouble seems to follow you. And I wriggle out of it like a slippery eel. Why are you following me? I'm looking for the quill, so I'm asking you, this little worker beast. Us? Working for the quill? Shows what you know. Is that so? I am innocent as a lamb. They were the quill thugs and you killed them. Wouldn't want to be in your boots. It sounds like you owe me your life. This one's brave and strong. Might be able to help us. So you're not working for the quill? We steal to stay alive and out of the quill's clutches. But you know where I can find him. They come up from the sewers like rats. Go on, give her what you took. Maybe she can save us. Good luck, Dane. Try not to get maimed and all that. I 
should watch out for a mouse trap. Now, now, Elwyn. Few have the wit that you and I possess. Most see the world in simpler terms, where we are the weaker sex. A brood mare who preys on innocence and you brag about strength. How little you know. Defend your mistress! Mother will give you a treat. Coward! Using children to spy and steal for your order. To educate them. Give me a child until you're seven, and I will give you the man. Or woman. What use are letters when a child can only write his name in pig shit? Or wisdom in a woman when she cannot wield it beyond her heart. <laughs> I taught little Alwyn so much more. Saved her from a life less worthy. She will find enlightenment in the Order, just as I did. If I could save them all, I would. But you can't. You have corrupted too many to save too few. My order is the only way forward. It can quench our thirst for knowledge. If only Alfred's slave faith is defeated. And what would you sacrifice for infinite knowledge? An immeasurable gift. Why refuse it? Not their innocence.
Goodwin said to meet him at an alehouse nearby. Prove it! Eivor! Is this where Justice hides when she's tired? Hides? Splood, no. This is a wake, my friend. A celebration to ease the quill on her way to eternal damnation. You heard. Hilda's were not the only eyes in Winchester. My spies tell me stories of an avenging angel striking down the unworthy. I have been called worse. Be thou hail, Eldorbana. That's life destroyer in our dialect. I said easy with my kinsbane, old honey waves alive in my horn, and my eyes on the door, expecting my death, yet unafraid. <laughs> You're quite safe with me, Dane. For now. If the mead is fresh and the air is cool, you may often find a friend even amongst your enemies. I could use someone like you in my settlement. With ink on his fingers and a sense of honor. I would love to devote myself to the study and practice of the law. There is a weariness in war I wish I could shake off. Impossible. Even in death our battles will rage on. It's the way of things. I must thank you before the ale dulls me. By cutting the order down to size you have given England a hope of unity. It must be a sour apple to swallow, knowing that you are the last of Winchester's enemies. Are you sure the Sikhs is dead? The bishop is dead, that's certain. And if the bishop was the Sikhs, the Sikhs is dead. A transitive property of mortality, you see. I don't believe it. Too much theater in Winchester. Overwrought players and wailing women. Well, you could pay your respects and see for yourself. The funeral is today. If he rots, I will leave with my silver. But if he lives, there's work to be done. Watch your step, Eivor. He'll be a hefty corpse in death. Alive, he'd be much bigger. Whether you find or make a corpse, meet me at the Witten with your report. If the bishop is worm meal, then here should be the proof. Lord grant my... Do you not see? I am in prayer. May we speak of your brother's death. Have you no shame? Leave me. I will leave you in peace then. Lord grant my brother Aelfer. Are you the bishop's voice. family? God no! Just here to make sure that impious bastard God. is actually dead. He bedded my wife, the randy bastard. Did you know Bishop Aylforth? Barely. But can you still smell the burned flesh? It's rife across the whole graveyard. Only his face was burned. That seems like a strange accident. And this corpse's build is slight, frail. Goodwin said Elfirth was a brute. Do you not see? I am in prayer. May we speak of your brother's death. Have you no shame? Leave me. I will leave you in peace then. I am sorry for your loss. Makes no odds to me. But I'm sorry for Harriet. She cared so much for him. More than a sister should. A stranger comes to Wember. You do not mourn like they do. Wember is always here. Helping the sleeping. Singing to them. So they are not frightened before they meet God. The sleeping? You mean the dead? Wimber helps the monks. Dig, dig, dig. You dig the graves. Did you bury Elferth? Have you seen Layoff? My poor friend. Poor, poor Layoff. Layoff? What happened to him? Sleeping. 
sleeping like my dog when I hugged him too hard. Someone hurt Layoff? Yes. Yes. And while he slept, they stole his face. Not just stolen, but burnt. Are we friends now? A sad day for Winchester. Maybe now God will reward us with a man who truly believes in him. Did you know Bishop Ilfirth? No, but I plan to write an epic poem of his grisly demise. Oh, poor Ailforth, scorched of face. All your woeful companions, bold, bionid, weeping. Weeping as you are... Uh... Sleeping? Oh, yeah, perfect, yes. Do you not see? I am in prayer. May we speak of your brother's death. Have you no shame? Leave me. We both know your brother's fate was a cloak of lies. He used your God's words for his own ends. Who are you to judge a man of faith? You, a Dane who believes in giants and wolves that eat the sun? Be gone. Get away from me, demon! Guards, protect me! We shoot on lava! Why will you not leave me alone? Enough of this, Cat and Mouse. Where is your brother, the one that called the Sikhs? He is a ghost now. But he will make himself flesh once more at the Witten. And Alfred will be king no more. He means to kill Alfred? Regicide? No. The king will step aside and Aelforth will lead us all, risen and resplendent as the Lord. You are a damned fool. The Sikhs must be hiding in the crowd, biding his time to strike at Alfred. <laughs> Not priest, clerk, or abbot can turn the letter of their sermons from Latin to English. And how can we understand God's words if they are not spoken in our tongue? Aelferth <laughs> is dead, and we mourn him. But the foul deeds of the unrighteous are sown among our holy deeds like cockles and tear in a field of wheat. Education, wisdom, enlightened thought. This will raise us above the sins of our fathers. These I will demand of the next Bishop of Winchester. And so we meet to discuss all worthy candidates <laughs> and choose the man who will shepherd our flock. The king is mine! By God, it's true. The bishop lives. Stand down. <laughs> Why do you defend this tiny crowd? Enough, you steaming cur! his lambs to slaughter. I was born to Christians in the northern wilds. My mother would cradle me beneath the stars and whisper, dove-like, God watches over you.
Then your people came. And God fixed his stout eye as they slit her throat for a copper ring. No stars threw down their spears as barbarians smeared her blood through fields of broken wheat. God watched all. And I hated him. It may be Alfred's God was testing you. A trial you failed. Alfred's God is weak. Yet he would chain us all in his service, from our first breath to our death rattle. My order wishes to break these mind-forged manacles. I am the wolf in Lamb's Wool. He takes on the role of a god himself. A worthy path to walk. A wolf is but a walking feast for ravens. One more gift for you, Dane. A deadly truth, if you can find it. With my death, the Order will not die. It will only transform into something far worse for all of us. Elfirth will not cheat Loki's dread daughter twice. I owe you my life. An irony not lost on me, Alfred. My king, we'll go by back streets to the old minster. Eivor may find us there when all has settled. Dane, my brother served God. He was not a Christian. He abhorred your God. But why strike him down? Have you no compassion for good men? We both have more questions than answers. But if you know this key, perhaps we can help one another. Where is its home? Take this key to the ruins beneath the bishop's house. You may find answers there. If Aelfer's sister spoke true, I will find answers in the ruins. This must be it, the door to Ilfirth's secrets. I will send this to Hytham. He may make some sense of it.
Everything they did was to undermine Elfrid. She lied to me. There is nothing here of the Order. I should see Elfred for my reward. Come forth, Eivor. Here is far enough. When wrongdoers came to devour my flesh, these enemies stumbled and fell. Have the laws of hospitality been thrown out, Alfred? I did exactly as we agreed. That you did. But do not mistake necessity for friendship. You are a man of your word, a man of God. Indeed. By his example, I live my life. Goodwin? Here is the only silver fit for one of your dragon boats. A reminder of Christ's sacrifice and our charity. This too I offer you. Live here among us in peace as a Christian, or die a pagan in a blood-soaked field. All you have to lose is life everlasting. And if I choose neither? He offers you hope, Eivor. A life of purpose, above and beyond this one. You'd be a fool to refuse. Your reign will end, King of the West Saxons. Raven wings will beat until your throne crumbles to dust. You were wrong, Goodwin. This one is beyond saving. your chance, damn you! I did not want it. Day, my love. The Order in Winchester has been wiped out, but we are no longer welcome there. My contact was none other than King Alfred himself. The Order wanted him dead, so he fought back. Alfred? The line between friend and enemy is a porous one. Eivor, Sigurd wishes to speak with you. Quite agitated. Has something happened? You will want to speak to him yourself. Eivor, the time has come. Our time. Our time for what? My final glory awaits. Your final glory? I fear to ask what that means. Do I not speak plainly? My time in Midgard is done. I wish now to see the hall of my ancestors. If you wish to die, it will not be by my hand. I do not speak of death, Eivor. I speak of life. Life and glory everlasting. I know I've been in a fog these last few weeks. I know I speak words you don't fully understand. 
Could I only ask you trust me once more? On my final voyage, back to Norway, to wish my father farewell, and achieve my destiny. Back to Norway? I need to discuss this with Ranvi. If you must. I will await your answer, down by the docks. Do not keep me waiting.